Well, so service is the title for today's sermon. I put that as developing a ser servant's heart because it is something we have to develop. Of course, when I started looking through the scriptures, we would be here till next Sunday if I put everything on here that I came across in studying for this sermon. So I put in there the first verses from Luke, and Jesus said those words right after a parable. And of course, does anybody know right off the top of their head what parable that was? That was the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? So Jesus said to them, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers, right? He said that or asked that question because really that expert in the law was trying to figure out, okay, what is service? What is that essence of service? That's what he was trying to figure out. Who do I need to be serving with and serving for and serving to in order to be right with God? So those, that parable of the Good Samaritan was what Jesus told. And in the process of telling that parable, that was his answer to the expert in the law because he really wanted to know who is my neighbor. So Jesus asked him that question. Who is my neighbor? Well, this is your neighbor. Your neighbor is anyone who needs your mercy. That's it. That is the whole answer. It's not a trick question. It's not a matter of who do I need to help? When can I help? How do I help? It's simply yes. Which of these three was a neighbor to the man? Period. Just a simple question to try and get the law expert to understand that it wasn't the preacher, it wasn't the Levite, the church worker. It was the person who just walked down the road and saw somebody needing help and stopped and helped. So his expert, the expert's answer was the person who showed him mercy. And Jesus said, that's it. So that's all you have to do. You don't have to figure out who you need to show mercy to. You just have to show it. That's it. And uh, I think John Wesley took those words and turned that into do all the, co the good you can by all the means you can whenever you can, kind of summed up John Wesley. Of course, he was the founder of Methodism, and that's, that's how he related to the words that he read in the Bible about how do we do this? How do we serve one another? Well, it's that easy. If somebody needs it and you have the ability to do it, then do it. That's it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, of course, Paul in Romans, he writes a little bit later because he knows that, okay, these, the church is having some issues. So let me, let me try and help everybody out here. So 12, 3 through 6, he starts to explain that, well, here, here's how it works. Right? He says that he can give this message because he's give, been given some grace by God to serve in this capacity. And he says, you're, you're getting it wrong. You're, you're thinking that you can do everything. You're thinking of yourself more highly than you should. That it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like that. It can't be like that. Right? He says, in sober judgment, according to the faith God has given to each of you. So I thought that was pretty interesting that we don't all have the faith. We don't all have the same amount of faith. We don't all have the same faith in the same way. My faith and my ability is different than yours, is different than hers, is different than his. But together when we use that faith that we've been given, the peace that we've been given, together with other pieces of our church family, 
now we start to have something that we can really serve and help others with. So in the, the next part of those verses, that's when he goes on to say that just as each of us has a body with different parts, we're all different parts. So then we start to realize, okay, well, uh, maybe my gift isn't cooking, and I'm doing everyone a favor if I don't cook anybody anything. I had somebody that I asked one time to be my liturgist, and he said, no, I can't, I won't, I never will, I can't. It's, it's impossible. If you need some concrete poured or something welded, give me a call and I will build it for you. But just don't ask me to get up and be the liturgist. And I said, okay, I'll put you in that column. Don't ever ask you to be the liturgist. I got it. But there are plenty of people who don't mind being the liturgist. I told Wesley before we started, my service is not singing. And that I'll make sure that I mute this to where that nobody accidentally hears that. But all of these people up here, that is their service. That is their gift. Because at the end of this verse, that's what it says. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. So our grace given by God, our gift given by God, and our faith given by God, we can use that all by ourselves. And together, it becomes even greater. Together, it really becomes a force for good. We can be that little bit, but then when we use it with each other, just like Miss Nancy said, she is not a fly by the seat of her pants type person, and I can do that. I can fly by the seat of my pants a little bit, but she's going to make sure we've got a plan, and there is a list, and that people really know in advance what is going on. But we need all of that together. We need all of those different gifts, all of that different faith, all of those different things in this body. And we each bring our talents to that. So that's what I really want you to know about service is that you're not expected to do it all. You can't do it all because you haven't been given all the faith. You haven't been given every bit of the grace. You haven't been given all of it. You've been given what you have, and that's what you use. And then if you need some help, you just ask for it. And somebody else, another member, another part of the body of Christ, will be there to help you with your service. I'll tell you a, a quick story about this week. My, my week, personally, was out of control. And by Tuesday, it was unbelievable. And there I was right in the middle of, of some serious truck repairs that I was about to start working on Tuesday afternoon. I had my dirty clothes on. I was ready to, to do some work. And then the phone rang. And so everybody knows this was Jessica's first week as our, our church administrator. So day one, she's got that under control Monday. But then Tuesday afternoon, she's like, hey, this is a serious, we got, we got things going on here. I need some help. And I'm like, okay, all right, well, I, I can help. If there's one thing I can do, I can help. So somebody uh, was, was just getting out of jail here in town and had no way to get home, had no ride, his car was impounded, um, and he had no idea what to do. He had nobody to come get him, and he thought he may be sleeping here on the streets. And so he managed to come here. He managed to talk to, to Jessica. And, and so she called me, and I said, okay, yeah, I'll be up there. I, I can handle this. Needed a ride to the other side of Decatur, Newark. I don't know if you've been there before. I, I went there for the first time Tuesday evening. <laughs> and I thought, okay, if there's one thing I can do, I've still got a car that works, and I've still got a driver's license. So this, this is definitely an inconvenience for sure. But I feel like, okay, that's what I'm being led to do. So I jump in the car, and I'm headed this way. And that was at like 4, 4.30. And I said, hey, you know, I know the office closes at 5. I'm going to be there right at 5. Is that going to Yeah, that's all right. Okay. 
So then I'm headed this way, and I think, oh, I better tell my wife I'm going to be missing for a couple hours. No telling. No telling what she's going to think if I don't give her a call. So I call her on the way, and then I, I have this feeling like I know God is taking care of me. I know beyond a doubt. But I also know that it's probably not good to, I know for a fact, it's not good to test God. And I felt like you should take somebody else with you. And I thought, this is 4.30, Tuesday afternoon. Who's not busy right now? Who could go with me? Who do I want in the car if this does not work out well? And so I pick up the phone after I hang up with my wife, and then I call somebody else. I call a member of the church here, and I told him, hey, I may, I may use your name. And he said it was all right. So I called old Bob Spearman. I thought, if I'm going to get into some trouble, that's who, I want, that's who I want to get into trouble with. So I called Bob, and I said, hey, Bob, I, I know I'm asking a lot, but are you busy right now? Well, I'm cooking dinner, you know. He's getting, getting dinner ready for his wife. And he's like, I'm in the middle of cooking dinner. I got stuff all over the stove. And I said, oh, okay, well, don't worry about it then. And he said, well, what, what do you need? And I said, well, can you ride with me to the other side of Decatur? He was like, well, when? I said, oh, right now. <laughs> He said, uh, well, what's going on? So I told him the story, and the phone got quiet for a minute. And I said, listen, Bob, I'm not mad at you. I know you, you're a busy man. you got things going on. I said, I got it. I'm not mad at you at all. Just, just go on and do your thing. And he was like, no, no, you know what? I'm going to turn the stove off. And I'm, I'm, well, he was like, where are you? I said, oh, I'm hitting the highway at Jolly right now, <laughs> headed to town. I'm going to be there in a few minutes. And he was like, well you know what, this, hey, don't worry about it. I'm going to be there too. He said, I'm, I'm going to turn this off and I'm, I'm headed there now too. And I'll go with you. And, and it was just like that, that, that somebody with no hope at all about what they were going to do or how they were going to get home and trying to recover from getting pulled over on a suspended license. Let him hear led him to Jessica, led him to me, led him to me and Bob, led him to us. And we were, we were on our way. And we really did have a good time driving and talking to him all the way down there. He was really, really appreciative. I was really appreciative. Of course, he said, well, I, oh, I passed her. I was headed to town and she was coming home from work. I said, hey, I'm, I'm sorry about that. No, 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 don't worry about it. But that's that's what we have the ability to do with and for each other. When we take our little bit of faith and your little bit of faith and the grace given to you, the grace given to me, the grace given to you, if we use it all by ourselves, it's a powerful thing. When we come together and use it in a group, just like those pictures of the pancake breakfast show, Supporting a whole community, sharing that love, sharing that fellowship, sharing whatever we have. And that's what makes us different. And that's what makes it great to be in love for Christ. There's one other, one other verse that I wanted to hit on before... We wrapped it up, and that was a little bit further in Romans. Romans 13, 8. And this is what it says. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. And after that, it's a, it laundry lists the, the, the Ten Commandments. And it says that you can't break any of those if you've got love for whoever needs it. Just like Jesus said in Luke after that parable of the Good Samaritan. He said, yeah, mercy to whoever needs it. That's how you serve. And then Paul expounded on that and said, hey, this is... This is how you serve. Don't think that you've got it all. Don't think that you can do it all. Don't think that it is just you. All of these different parts.
come together and can do something amazing. You can do something amazing, but we can do something amazing. So that, that first slide had those two questions about what is service, what is the essence of service. And I think that that last verse in Romans sums it up. That you have to love. Well, who do I have to love? Well, everybody, anybody, whoever needs it. And when you start to do that, then you're serving. However that happens, whatever talent you have, whatever gift you have, whatever portion has been given to you, when you use it in love towards somebody else, you're serving. Join me in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning so thankful. So thankful that your grace and your faith has been given to us. Not more than we can handle, but exactly what we need. Not all of it, but the portion that we need. Lord, let us share that portion. Let us witness to that portion. Let us combine with each other as a body of Christ to share your love. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be here today. I thank you for allowing all of these fellow believers to be here with me. Lord, I thank you that we have the ability to come here and worship you. I ask that you lead us out from this place. Help us share that love. Help us show your light into the world because it so desperately needs it now. In your name I pray, Lord. Amen.